Hello, and welcome to this livecast version of uh, this presentation. So uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, the basic web technologies, the main technologies that power most web pages, uh, how they work, how to use them, and uh, yeah, just a, basically an introduction to how to do web dev, pretty much. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. So first off, uh, the anatomy of the web page. So a web page typically has three major components to it. Uh, so it's going to have the HTML, which is kind of you can think of like a like the skeleton of, of a web page. Uh, the JavaScript, which is kind of like the muscles or the nervous system. It's what actually like does things that happen in the page that you see. And then uh, the CSS, which would kind of be like the outer shell or like the skin or clothes of a web page. Um, and so we'll start off with the HTML. And so the HTML basically refers to anything that typically would be a noun on a web page. Uh, so for example, something like a block of text or an image. And so um, with HTML, it's it basically, it's what's called a markup language. And so basically all that it means is that it's, it just says how data should be organized and it doesn't actually do any sort of processing. So it's not a real programming language. It's just literally, this is how the data should be represented. Uh, and that's it. <clears throat> so um, how do you write HTML? So HTML is basically a collection of tags and attributes, uh, which I'll elaborate on a little bit here. Um, but tags are the most general way of saying how you want something to appear. And uh, attributes are how you set special behaviors for tags. So uh, a tag, for example, like a, a paragraph tag, which I'll talk about later, basically means small text. And so uh, there'll be a bunch of other tags. And what they are is it's just basically a way to organize your data in a, in a predictable manner. <clears throat> um, so each tag has an opening tag which is uh, denoted by the uh, the angle brackets surrounding whatever the tag name is. Um, along with that, it's then it then has whatever content, if there is any content that needs to go inside of that tag, uh, which can also include other tags. Um, and then finally, it's closed with a forward slash in between the first angle bracket and, uh, and the tag name. So uh, any attributes that you need to add would be added in the opening tag before the second angle bracket. So you can see in that example, I have uh, the opening angle brackets, tag, which would be replaced by whatever the tag name is, and then attribute equals, and then whatever the value is in sync quotes, and then the same as, same as normal for everything else. So let's see some examples. So as you can see, uh, we have here the, um, so this HTML gives you regular text, and so that's basically what's called a paragraph tag, which is the which is small text, and it results in what you can see down below, uh, which is right here. Sorry, uh, and so that's what this paragraph tag is, and so basically I put that same HTML in this page, and so that's why um, that's why this text is smaller than this text, because you can see in here the next one is called a heading tag. And so that basically makes it a little bit bigger. And so that's all HTML is in a nutshell. It's basically just tags um, that have a way of representing data that you want to show off. So with that, uh, let's talk about some common HTML tags. Uh, but first, one thing to keep in mind is that there is a special syntax in HTML, um, which basically is a, it's like a, it's like a tag except for it just has this exclamation point and then two dashes and it's closed with two dashes and then a closed angle bracket. And this is what's called a comment. So basically this is left in there for whoever the developer is who's coming next. If there's any comments that you need to make to them, that'll make it easier for them to work on this sort of stuff in the future. Uh, so if you see that anywhere, then that's, that's what it is. It basically means that uh, the browser completely ignores them. So first off we have heading tags. And so heading tags basically are denoted with an H and then a number after them, and they go in ascending order to get smaller, which is kind of weird. Um, but as you can see here, so this would be an example of a heading two, which is quite large, and then a heading three, which is a little bit smaller, and then a heading four, which is a little bit smaller than that. Uh, it starts at one and goes to six. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, basically, you just put text inside them and then it shows up. So this, for example, these are all heading twos. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about that one. Uh, paragraph tags are used to create smaller size text and they typically contain longer content. Um, so they have, they're denoted, we saw them a little bit earlier in the first example, uh, they're denoted with a little P here and then just whatever text you wanna have. So literally all of the text in this slide except for this first part is all inside of a paragraph tag. Um, additionally, there's also emphasis tags, which is EM 
and strong tags that can be put inside to give you italicization and bolding. That's actually what's happening here. Uh, this is a heading tag that then has, an e has a strong tag inside of it to make it bold. Uh, additionally, there's also anchor tags, which are basically what is used to create links. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually just switch over to just the regular second monitor, and uh, I'm going to quickly create an HTML file. Uh, so I'm just going to call it index.html. And let's actually take a look at some of this. So if you just double click on the HTML file, it will bring it up. And so right now it's blank, which is why this is blank here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up with a text editor called Visual Studio Code. And here we go. So uh, let's take a look at what we've already seen. So we've already seen the heading tag. So let's just say H1 and we'll say, uh, welcome to my page. Right. And then we'll close it. I have a thing in place that automatically writes the rest of the closing tag, but we have a nice little big opening thing that just says, welcome to my page. Next, we can have some text. So we'll say a paragraph tag. And we'll say, this is some useful text. Uh, and then we can add one of those anchor tags. We can actually add one of those strong tags that I mentioned earlier, which is the one that bolds things. So we can add a strong tag here. And then we'll just put the closing tag on the other side. So as you can see, you can nest tags inside of tags. And then uh, we can add a link. So let's say uh, here is more good text. And then we'll just do a, and I mentioned it in there, you do need to have something called an href, which is basically your URL. Google.ca. And then we'll just say text. And so what our web page will look like now, if I just refresh, is welcome to my page. Uh, this is some useful text with the strong tag there. And here is more text with a link to Google. And so all of that is just written right here. Uh, and then if we go back to the actual presentation here, uh, yeah, you'll see here. So this is where a, a equals href. And then href is basically just the URL. It's just a special name for saying the URL. And then you put whatever text you want to actually appear, and then you close it off. So that's what gives you the, uh, oh, whoops. That's what gives you this bit at the end here. Okay, so next we have list tags. There's two different types. There is unordered and ordered lists. So you can see here you have uh, UL, and then you have these list items inside. And so UL stands for unordered list. So that's these bullet point lists that you can see down here at the bottom. Uh, and then uh, ordered lists would be your like one, two, three sort of steps list that you go through. And that both of these are just basically the, um, the outer definition of unordered or ordered. And then it has list items with text inside of them. So in terms of just doing regular old HTML, if we come back to here, we can see let's do an unordered list first. And I'm just going to end it there. Oh, oops. Oh. And then all we need is li, and then we can say uh, list item one. I'll call it paste that a couple times. We'll say list item two and list item three. And when we go ahead and take a look at the page again, which I don't have open, just give me two seconds. There we go. You can see now we have these this unordered list. So that's the, the bullet pointed list. Uh, and if we go ahead and change this to OL instead of UL. Oh, whoops. What just happened there? That was weird. Uh, if we go back to here and just save that and refresh, we'll get one, two, three. And so basically, um, all that happened there is that you just change that and, it's, uh, and it takes over. Okay. So next are divider tags. And this is a little bit weirder. Uh, divider tags basically are a way of putting other tags inside of, uh, inside of like a logical grouping. So one example might be if you have uh, just, for example, a navigation bar at the top here, uh, that might be inside of a div. Um, 
Some people also use sections to define this. So this page is actually a section that has a div inside of it. And so the div is what holds all the content and the section is what defines the actual, um, the fact that it's a new slide in this case for this specific um, HTML that I'm using. So um, yeah, basically it's just a way to group things together. It just basically says, here's a group and all of the information inside of it is grouped together. Uh, and last but not least are image tags. So if you want to have an image, basically you just have a, an image um, tag. You don't actually need to end this tag. This tag doesn't need to be ended, um, but you basically just have IMG and then you have a source uh, or SRC and that can either be a URL that links to an image somewhere or alternatively, it's a path to a file. So uh, in the case of the, oh, whoops, in the case of this website here, there's actually a folder called path that has a folder inside of it called two that has a file inside of it called image.png. And so basically I'm just saying, get this, get this image from this folder. And that's basically where it's, where it's going to be getting it from. And then you can also specify a height and width because uh, sometimes images are larger than they, uh, than, than is easy to get into one page. So that's, that's that. All right, uh, so next we have JavaScript. So any verbs on a website are typically JavaScript. So for example, the fact that this navigation bar appears only when I hover over it, uh, that so the disappearing navigation bar, the disappearing part is JavaScript. Uh, the transition animations between these slides that you can see, that's all going through JavaScript. And uh, basically anything that happens in a web page that doesn't need the page to actually be reloaded is typically gonna be JavaScript, um, which is actually exactly what I wrote right here. Um, yeah, and then the example that all the slide transitions on this uh, presentation are all using JavaScript. So uh, I'm not going to actually walk you through JavaScript as a whole. Uh, again, it's an entire programming language, so I'm there's no way I'm going to be able to do that in like a half an hour for this presentation. So basically, if you want, if you're interested, you can check out the website that I've linked there. That's the W3C uh, website, or you can check out the video if you're interested in learning how to use JavaScript um, specifically. But what I am going to do is I'm going to show you how to use existing JavaScript that's been written for you in a web page. So the first way is using a script tag. So a script tag allows you to just write pure JavaScript that executes the second the page is loaded. Um, and so as you can see here, basically you're just setting up a variable called hello world and then printing it to the console, um, which basically is a fancy thing inside the browser uh, that just lets you write text to. So, um, yeah, so basically you just write this, you just open a script tag, write your JavaScript, and then close your script tag, and it will execute the second that the page is loaded. Next is the link script tag, and so this is useful for if you have uh, a file, like for example, highlight.js, uh, that basically is stored on somebody else's server and you want to be able to pull it in, then all you do is, kind of like the image, you just do a script with a source tag that points to a URL, or alternatively, you can do the same thing as you can with images where um, your source can be something local. So if you have a .js file somewhere in your um, somewhere somewhere in your project, then you can just link to that through here as well. And then uh, last but not least, we have CSS. So this is pretty much what handles any adjectives that are in the page. For example, the white text that you're seeing here is CSS. Uh, how large the text is specifically. So the heading two says that it should be larger, but in this case, this actual uh, web slides is what this is called, is saying how big these things should be. Uh, this color background, you've noticed that as we go through the background color is changing, and that's basically because of the, uh, because of the CSS on these pages. And so, uh, yeah, basically what CSS is roughly is it's just a way of defining what tags should look like. Uh, so you can specify what's that all paragraph tags, for example, should be a certain color or that all heading two tags should be a certain size. Uh, but you can also specifically target content by using ID or class attributes. Uh, now, if you want more details on that, you can actually click on, the, I provided a little link at the end here that you can click on and that will take you to a page that will explain what all that actually means. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna move on and tell you how to use CSS. Uh, again, there is an absolute ton of information about how CSS works. And so I've linked again a video and a web page 
um, to like get you up and running if you don't know anything about CSS. Um, but basically what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you how to again use pre-existing CSS as opposed to explicitly teaching you how to use CSS. So the, uh, the first way is with a style tag. And so style tags, uh, kind of like the script tag, basically it allows you to inline um, CSS directly in your HTML documents. Uh, and then on top of that, there is a link tag, which basically just lets you link to a style sheet is what's, is what CSS stands for cascading style sheet. And so basically you can link to either again, a URL, uh, using href, or you can link to a, um, a, a file doing the same thing. So it's basically the same as JavaScript where you can link externally or you can inline it if you really want to. Uh, some people will do one, some people will prefer the other. Um, typically, if you have really large files, there'll be a large amount of CSS, then it'll be in a separate file like it is here. Uh, or if you just have a really small amount of CSS for a page, then that style will actually be in here. So uh, let's actually take a look at how this works all together. So let's go ahead and what we'll do here is we'll say, so we'll open some style. Oops, we'll open a style tag here. And what I'll do is we'll quickly swap over. So this is what the page currently looks like and you can see how large this text is. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do H1 and what I'm gonna say is font size and we'll just say like something ridiculous like 100 pixels. And then if we go back and refresh, you see the size of this is basically giant. Uh, you can also do things like, whoops, color, which is spelled wrong. Uh, well, it's spelled the American way at least. And so we can just say blue, for example, and refresh. And now we have some blue text at the top here. Uh, and then next, what we can do is we can do some JavaScript. So we'll just do the same example that I mentioned in, uh, whoops. Oops. Script. There we go. And so we'll just do that same example. So we'll do var greeting is equal to hello world. And then we'll just say console.log greeting. And so all oops. Uh, semi -colon. So all this will do is you'll see when we run it, nothing happens. But if I go ahead and open up the console by pressing F12 on Windows you'll see we now have hello world showing up in there. So that's happening every single time I reload the page. You can see where it's flickering there. Um, and so, yeah, so that's how you, that's basically the basics of how you bring in H or CSS and JavaScript. And so um, to end off with, if you do have any questions about any of the stuff that I've covered, because I went through it pretty quickly, uh, you can feel free to submit them on my website. Um, this particular presentation will be available I'll have a link in the video description, but also at kieranwood.ca slash basic dash web dash technologies. So kieranwood is K-I-E-R-A-N-W-O-O-D, all one word, dot C-A slash basic dash web dash technologies. And if you have any questions, you can just feel free to just go to kieranwood.ca uh, and then just the contact form that's there. So when you come to kieranwood.ca, you'll just get this and you can just click contact. And then specifically, there's a thing that says presentation question. So you can just click on that and then fill it out and send it off to me. So uh, yeah, so thank you for listening to this. And if you enjoyed it, uh, be sure to stick around. I'll be doing more of these sorts of presentations. I'll be doing one specifically about how to take a web, how to actually develop a website a little bit in more, um, <clears throat> more detail and how to plan a website and that sort of stuff uh, in another presentation. So if you're interested in that, then stick around for that. And uh, yeah, all right, thank you.